energy and change, an important topic in grade 11 and grade 12 chemistry. In this playlist, we'll be looking at energy and change. I'll be breaking down all the little subtopics that you need to know. So please watch all the videos in this playlist. We'll be starting off with something called the heat of reaction, a very important term. So let's jump right into the video. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe now. Later in this video, I will show you how to work out the enthalpy change or the heat of the reaction for this reaction behind me based off of this potential energy graph. Remember, the whole point of the chemical reaction is to break the bonds of the reactants and form new bonds for the products, create completely new products. When this is done, the particles are rearranged, products are formed. And when this happens, energy must be transferred. There must be a transfer of energy. So, Energy is absorbed initially in the reaction, it's called activation energy, in order to break the bonds of the reactants. The atoms rearrange and new products are formed, new bonds are formed, energy is released. So there are these energy changes and these heat changes during chemical reactions. Enthalpy, represented by the symbol H, is the total internal energy of all the substances taking part in a chemical reaction. So the reactants, the products. Although it's difficult to measure enthalpy, we can measure enthalpy change or the heat of reaction represented by the symbol over here. That is when energy is transferred into or out of the system. Basically how energy changes throughout the reaction. And it's called heat of reaction because energy change or enthalpy change is often accompanied by a change in heat. So heat being released or heat being absorbed. So this is an example of what can happen in a chemical reaction. The reactants have a specific energy or enthalpy associated with it. When we want the reaction to take place, we need to break these bonds in the reactants. We need to break them. In order to do this, we take in energy. It's called activation energy. This forms the activated complex over here. Now the atoms are being rearranged. In order to form new bonds, energy needs to be released. So there's an intake of energy energy is absorbed, there is a release of energy when products are formed. And what we measure is the difference between these two things. The difference between taking in energy and releasing energy, it's called the change in enthalpy or the heat of the reaction. So the definition for heat of reaction, it is the energy absorbed or released per mole in a chemical reaction. You have to say per mole, and this is the formula that we use to work out change in enthalpy or heat of reaction. It's the enthalpy of the products or the energy of the products minus the energy of the reactants. Take note of the unit, kilojoules per mole, because we need to measure enthalpy change as the energy absorbed or released per mole, according to the definition. So in this case, the energy of the reactants is 400 kilojoules per mole. The energy of the products you can read off here is 100 kilojoules per mole. What happens in this reaction is, yes, we take in energy in order for the reaction to start. It's called activation energy. We don't know what this value is over here. It doesn't matter. Then this is called activated complex. When the products are formed, energy is released. That result in the energy of the products being 100. So as you can see, there was more energy that was released than was taken in. How do we calculate the change in enthalpy? It's the energy of the products, which in this case is 100, minus the energy of the reactants, in this case it's 400, and we get a negative change in enthalpy. Remember your unit is kilojoules, per mole. Now that negative has significance. That negative can help us classify the reaction as either an exothermic reaction or an endothermic reaction. Exothermic reactions have a change in enthalpy that is less than zero. In other words, another way to think of it is they have a change in enthalpy that is negative. The reason why is because their products have a lower energy than their reactants. There's a net release of energy. Endothermic reactions, on the other hand, this one over here, they have a delta H or change in enthalpy or heat of reaction that is positive, bigger than zero, positive. The reason why is because there's a lot more energy that is taken in than what is released. So the products have a higher energy than the reactants. 
What is important to also be aware of is the fact that they can ask me for the heat of reaction or enthalpy change for the forward reaction or for the reverse reaction. Just to clarify what I mean by forward or reverse reaction, certain reactions, and this is something you learn in grade 12, are what we call reversible. This one is not necessarily reversible, but what it basically means is that the reactants can be converted to products, and those products can go backwards and be converted back into the reactants. So the reaction happens both ways. So if I were to ask you to calculate the heat of reaction, delta H, for the forward reaction, this is how it would work. When we do the forward reaction, we read from left to right. This is how I think of it. We read from left to right, meaning these are the reactants. So that's the energy of the reactants. And this is the products. That's the energy of the products. And remember your formula for calculating change in enthalpy, it's the energy or the heat of the products minus the energy or the enthalpy of the reactants. So for the forward reaction, when it's forward, we read from left to right, the energy of the products is this one over here, it's 320, minus the energy of the reactants, it's 120, it is 200 kilojoules. In this case, they're saying kilojoules, kilojoules, or kilojoules per mole. That is for the forward reaction. If I were now to say, let's calculate delta H change in enthalpy for the reverse reaction, it would look like this. Remember, for the forward reaction, these were the reactants and these were the products. For the reverse reaction, we reverse that. We read it from right to left. So what that means is that these will be the reactants, these ones over here, reactants, and on the other side, we will have the products. Okay, so the products and the reactants basically switch places. Delta H, in, um, enthalpy of the products, would, which would be 120, minus the enthalpy of the reactants, 320, it would give me negative 200, okay. Remember, this is how we calculate change in enthalpy when we want to use a graph. I hope that this video has helped you understand enthalpy change or heat of reaction. For the other subtopics in this playlist or in this big topic, check out the playlist link below. I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye, everyone.